Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, February 26, 2012. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. A collaboration between researchers from Denmark, Scotland, and the U.S. has resulted in a synthetic protein involved with stem cells. As we've discussed on Brainstorm before, much research is going into adult-derived pluripotent stem cells. Leaving ethics aside for a moment, adult-derived stem cells would generally be better than embryonic ones, because that way, a patient could have a genetically identical source of cells. This is where the protein OCT4 comes in. It binds to particular portions of DNA and regulates genes involved with stem cells. It can keep an embryonic cell from differentiating and convert adult cells into stem cells. This is generally done by triggering OCT4 production with a virus. Now, because keeping a stem cell in a pure form for very long is difficult, the researchers wanted a more efficient protein. So using recombinant DNA technology, they altered the gene for OCT4 and just made a more active form of the protein. The synthetic protein supports stem cells in conditions they don't normally grow in and will hopefully accelerate regenerative medicine research. And from the field of nanotechnology, Harvard University researchers have developed a breakthrough DNA-based nanorobot based on what's called DNA origami. They've constructed devices that can selectively deliver a molecular payload. This particular one has the structure of an open-ended barrel and has a latch that is opened by reacting with specific cell membrane proteins. These devices were tested on two types of cancer cells, leukemia and lymphoma. In each case, a unique set of instructions were carried in the nanorobots, a combination of antibody fragments that triggered the cell's suicide switch. Many novel elements are incorporated into the design of the nanorobots. Although it could deliver drugs, it's the first time this kind of device has been used with antibody messages. It's also the first triggered by proteins rather than DNA or RNA. Of course, it'll still need much development, but this device has really shown that this kind of nanotechnology has practical applications and hopefully will be used in the medical field soon. We end with a quick update from the world of agriculture. A study led by Oxford University scientists compared the environmental impact of different farming systems. What may come as a shock to nobody is that conventional farming techniques aren't the most environmentally friendly, but neither was organic. Three farming methods were examined in the study and the most environmentally friendly was integrated farming, which takes aspects of both conventional and organic. Now, integrated farming is interesting in that while it uses many environmentally friendly practices, it still has the goal of producing a high yield. Things like rotating crop types, winter cover crops using minimal pesticides, among others, helps integrated farming use less energy. The ultimate downside to organic farming is that producing the same amount of food requires more land. Other uses for this extra land could be very helpful, such as growing crops for biofuel or having forested areas. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.